the Vice President of the Commission, High Representative of the Union for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, are going to make statements on the situation in Algeria. Johannes Hahn, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Honourable Members of the European Parliament. We have been witnessing uh, a new dynamic in recent weeks, starting on the 22nd of February with massive nationwide demonstrations in Algeria. These were prompted by the announcement that incumbent uh, President Bouteflika would run for a fifth mandate in the presidential elections initially set for the 18th of April. Since then, demonstrations have continued virtually every day and have grown in size. Besides opposing a new mandate for President Bouteflika, the protesters uh, are demanding a broader reform of Algeria's political system. Notwithstanding their massive scale, demonstrations have been largely peaceful and the response by the security services has been very measured. Official communication from the government in recent weeks following the nomination of a new prime minister and deputy prime minister stresses uh, the necessity to consult and listen to the people with a view to introducing significant reforms. Algeria is a key partner for the European Union. We have important political, economic and people-to-people -people interests in the country and in the region where Algeria is a stabilizing factor. Our bilateral relations have progressed positively in recent years and we expect that to continue. The High Representative uh, met Minister of State Lamama in Brussels on the 7th of March to discuss the situation in the country before his subsequent appointment as Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister and I also had the opportunity to talk to him. Demonstrations have so far been peaceful and the response by security services has been measured. This is highly commendable and restraint should continue. As you all know, the situation is currently very fluid. We have been following today's developments very closely. It's key now that there should be a positive response to the people's aspirations. The call for reform of governance, for greater political openness and for more economic and social opportunities, especially for the young. Any process has to be transparent and include all sections of Algerian society. During this period, it's important to remember that it's for the Algerians to decide for themselves and among themselves how to make this transition happen. On the EU side, we should encourage a free, fair and inclusive election of Algeria's next president to be organized within a reasonable time frame. The European Union is ready to support the election with technical expertise and will consider fielding an electoral observation mission. Of course, if Algeria requests this and if the conditions of the process are met, I count on Parliament's support in this uh, regard. We should also support the call for the broader reform and transition process. A national conference could be the platform for discussing this as long as it is generally inclusive, representative and designed to ensure political legitimacy. It's important to make quick progress on this. Citizens' initiatives for a peaceful solution are also circulating and we understand there's willingness on both sides to define a common way forward. We hope that the consensus crystallizes around a roadmap for the transition as well as on who, who should be in charge of carrying it out. Whatever process is followed, it must be one that is accepted by Algerians as expressing their will. And, as we have stated publicly, the European Union stands ready to accompany Algeria in this process if the Algerians request it. The Union should continue to support Algeria in its socio-economic reforms and the shaping of perspectives that match the desires and ambitions of the population, especially the young. All this will be done in full respect of Algeria's sovereignty and in a spirit of partnership, as it is defined in our uh, neighborhood uh, policy uh, concept. The events over the past four weeks have tested political maturity in Algeria, and we count on all concerned to face up to the call for change and to bring a peaceful 
transition to fusion. Thank you. Kiitokset, komissaari Haan. Ja nyt annan puheenvuoron. Thank you very much. I'll now give the floor to the EPP. Mr. Preda. Thousands of demonstrators are in the road, in the streets in Algeria for credible policy and the replacement of a president who's been unable to govern for a long time. Unfortunately, the authorities don't seem to be listening to the people because their solution for getting out of the crisis is not a solution. Extending the mandate of uh, the president, which expires in 28, and suspending the dem democratic process is contrary to what the Algerians are calling for. The proposal has been rejected by civil society and the opposition. There are more, more defections and assertions within the government and within the army, and that shows very clearly what the message is. The Algerians are trying to reassure their partners they can manage the crisis, but that just shows the failure of uh, their solution. Algeria is in crisis. This is a major partner of the European Union, a guarantor of stability in the regions. There's a need to have a transparent and inclusive system of governance to enshrine the legitimate expectations of the Algerians. It's important that we break from the current system. Thank you. Kiitos, Edustaja Preda. Sitten SND-ryhmän nimissä puhuu Edustaja. Thank you very much, SND. Ms. Ayala Senda. Gracias, President. Thank you very much, Madam President. I'd like to thank Mr. Hahn for his words as well. We fully share them. And of course, we recognize these peaceful movements full of pride from the people of Algeria over the last few days taking to the streets to show the need for profound political change, leading to free democratic elections within a reasonable time frame. We fully agree to support this transitional phase and to carry on with uh, transitional support for a country like Algeria, with whom we have a long tradition of relations, and we need to keep them close. We need to keep them in that relationship. Also, uh, it's good to see that in the last parliamentary term, we have uh, managed to get something that we wanted for a long time, which is a bilateral delegation between the EU and Algeria at the parliament, which can help us. And obviously, we uh, can put this forward to help the Commission to strengthen links and to get moving as, pos as soon as possible to peaceful democratic transition. Thank you. Kiitos, edustaja Ayala Sender. Thank you very much, Ms. Ayala Sender. Pass builder, the ECR. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Commissioner, basically there's a deep historically rooted problem with sovereignty in Algeria. This is very sensitive, and they're very sensitive for any to any interference from other countries and we have to keep that in mind as the commissioner said we have to be particularly careful because of the social situation in algeria at the moment there have been a lot of demonstrations you say you can't do, make anything new from the old so it's interesting to see whether the presidential elite is going to be affected by this. It's very important for the EU to monitor developments in Algeria. The so-called Arabian Spring has taught us that this kind of uh, movement brings to the fore religiously based groups who emerge from the demonstrators. I urge you to work with Algeria to, for a, a peaceful solution 
and I hope that there will be full freedom of speech and freedom of religion. We have to have freedom of religion for all Algerians and not have the emergence of fundamentalists. Thank you. Kiitos, edustaja Belder. Sitten Alderyhmän nimissä puhuu. Thank you very much. Have you not? Thank you, Madam President. Algeria is rich in resources, but it's been run by a corrupt military or oligarchy since it became independent. The single state party has run the country by itself. But there's two Algerias. One which is because of the exists because of the legitimacy of a far off liberation war. Another one, a new young country that lives in misery and unemployment. General Gait Salah from the Army General Staff has said that the virtual President Bouteflika is unfit to rule and should step aside. But power is now at least temporarily in the hands of the national, the Council of the Nation, Mr. Ben Salah, but it's still ultimately in the hands of General Gallet. In September, everything began when General Sulla purged the armed forces, including the security forces. The army was actually preparing for its transition. As Giuseppe de Lampedusa wrote, everything needs to change so that everything can stay as it is. The people now are starting to talk, but time has run out. And so they've created a fiction that there's going to be a possible change where, in fact, what they are trying to do is maintain, in power, maintain themselves in power indefinitely. The military understands, though, that their time is up and that society in Algeria needs to be opened up. Algeria is crucial for the stability of the Sahel and and to the north, in the southern Mediterranean, and thus Europe. We need, therefore, to show clear support to the people of Algeria as this necessary, inevitable transition occurs. They should understand that they're not alone, that we support them, and that we want to guarantee a better future for Algeria, because that will be a better future for everybody. Thanks, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Nart. For the Greens, Mr. Utterson. Thank you, um, Vice President. I would like to uh, uh, salute everybody that st st stood alongside Algeria with the demonstrations from women and our others over the last few weeks. And we've seen the, the terrible things and the trauma, uh, almost a civil war. None of this has had an, uh, an effect. The people uh, live under fear and shame because they can't control their own destinies. But once again, we've heard complete silence uh, from Brussels. Commissioner, between interference and indifference, there is a middle way that Europe needs to tread. Uh, respect, uh, re respectful brotherly support for uh, uh, people that's waking up. We need to listen to what people are calling from, uh, for in Algeria, moving for dem democratic change, opening the public f forums, respecting human rights and dignity for everybody. We need to support the people in uh, Algeria, around Constantina, to make sure that we don't just uh, substitute the, the wrong kind of power again. Thank you. Kiitos, edustaja Urtason. Ja sitten ed Thank you, Mr. Urtason. Miguel Urban Crespo for Gur and Jill. Gracias, eh, President. Thank you, Madam President. Algerian men and women demonstrating in the streets sick and tired of a totalitarian regime. Bouteflika resigned under pressure, but the elections have been postponed and a transition period opened. But the demonstrators in the streets are calling for real change, a national unity government which will call elections and draw up a constitution which will guarantee social rights, individual freedoms, and collective freedoms too. 
They're the biggest peaceful demonstrations that we've seen in Algeria for years, but there's a deafening international silence. It's the third biggest supplier of gas to Europe, and the European Union's keener on the interests of multinationals than of the Algerian people. We should be backing the protesters and their demands. The European Parliament should send its support to the legitimate re demands from the people of Algeria calling for dem democracy and justice. We need to act. Thank you, President. Thank you, Mr. Urban Crespo. For the NFG situation in Algeria, the protests, thankfully so far, have been peaceful uh, protests with young people taking to the streets uh, because they believe in something different to what the Algerian government at present is offering. And one of the key uh, comments that, that we see time and time again from people in Algeria is that they desperately want freedom of speech, that they want to be able to express themselves in ways that they've not been able to do of late. But the situation is incredibly serious. We've got the army chief calling for uh, Bouteflika to be declared unfit to govern. Uh, the one point that I want to make specifically today that's perhaps not been raised yet in this debate is that freedom of speech must also imply freedom of religion. Freedom of religion is guaranteed under Article 36 of the Algerian Constitution, which states that freedom of religion and creed is inviolable. And I want to just mention the persecution of religious minorities in Algeria, and specifically uh, Christians, because I've met uh, Algerian pastors on two occasions who've come to the European Parliament to express their concerns about how they are being persecuted at present. Algeria has moved from number 42 to number 22 on the world watch list of most persecuting countries of Christians in just one year. We've seen churches having been closed, and particularly the EPA, the Église Protestante d'Algérie. Uh, we've seen the government using various administrative means to close down uh, churches, and, to, and we've seen uh, those who have preached on social media put in prison. We've seen those who import religious materials put in prison. We've seen those who convert to Christianity being persecuted. So all I'd ask, really, is that in all of these discussions, in all of these debates, please, can we remember that Christians and other religious minorities are being persecuted in Algeria as these matters are being discussed in the coming days. Thank you, Mr. Arnott. For ENF, Jacques Colombier, please. President, when France ruled Algeria, it was a paradise. Is this a quote from a Frenchman from Algeria? No. This is a quote from Hussein Tamed, who was a part of the Liberation Army. It makes a lot of sense now. We're not talking about a democratic transition. What can the EU do in this situation? You, Algeria is not a member of the EU, at least not yet. Any question relating to Algeria is really up to the Algerian people. They took their independence, but the rulers have been unable to rule efficiently all these years. So the, the demonstrations that we're seeing in Paris and elsewhere should be in Algeria and everything. Mr. Bouteflika is always insulting France and spitting in French eyes. It's no good at them coming to moan to our taxpayers now. We think there's only one imperative, and that is that current events sh should in no way justify any additional immigration. Thank you, Mr. Colombier. Mr. Salafranca. Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, we've followed with concern the recent events in Algeria. Suspension of presidential elections, the uh, petition uh, from uh, the army from the, the, regarding the president, looking at the transition required to give uh, a voice again to the Algerian people 
to make sure that uh, democracy and freedom are guaranteed. This needs to happen uh, with good order. We should avoid a power back vacuum and avoid the problems other countries in the region have uh, got into and the uh, other I events in the history of Algeria. We need to make sure that civil society and political parties take part in this process and that there's a legitimate voice given to everyone in this uh, process for the uh, Algerian people for free elections with international observers flanking it and the EU as a positive member of Algeria will hopefully be able to flank that process and move towards freedom that uh, people are demonstrating for peacefully in the streets of Algeria. Thank you. Kiitos, edustaja Salafranka, ja sitten edustaja Pant Thank you. Mr. Panzeri, please. Thank you, Madam President. In Algeria, the demonstrations are happening almost continuously now. They're huge, they're peaceful, and it's makes it, they make it clear what the vast majority of the Algerian people are thinking. They were originally protesting against a fifth term of officer, Mr. Bouteflika, now they are calling for a speedy end to the transitional period. What we need to avoid is that we have a movement from elections without Bouteflika to Bouteflika without elections. We need to remember that it's crucially important that Algeria has a framework of stability where democracy, rights and reforms are crucial elements. I hope that activating Article 102 in the Algerian constitution could be the first step, even though it's not enough in itself. What's necessary is that the European Union's under its own foreign policy, look more carefully at what's happening in Algeria, because its balanced development is something that's crucial for the entire region. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Panzeri. Marek Jurek, please. We are observing what's happening in Algeria. Of course, we keep a weather eye on it because uh, geographically it's close to us, and we also remember what happened in the 90s, the last uh, democratic experiment which led to the Islamic Liberation Front coming uh, winning, and then we got a civil war. It didn't just affect the uh, Algeria, it went beyond the borders of Algeria to Europe. So I have to note what Mr. Han has said and approve of what he said. We need to keep an eye on what's happening in Algeria calmly. It's in the interest of Europe to solve this conflict peacefully, and we really shouldn't get into the. We're not going to make the errors we made in Libya and elsewhere. Kiitos, edustaja Marek. Jurek. Thank you, Mr. Marek Jurek. Ms. Saiki. Thank you very much. President and Commissioner, the heart of Algeria is beginning to beat. This is one of the slogans we read in the streets of Algeria over these last weeks and months. I'd like to pay homage to the people of Algeria the organization of these peaceful demonstrations is something that you must admire. There is a need for more than just a reform of the regime. There has to be a significant change. This transition cannot but be run by the people who ran the country into this situation. The EU should be able to meet the challenge and not give the people of Algeria the impression that we haven't understood what it is they want. The f future belongs to us is another slogan. And the Algerians have shown with strength and dignity that they're working towards a democratic future. It's an excellent sign for the young people of Algeria. Thank you very much.
I give the floor to Mr. Lopez. Thank you very much, President, Commissioner. Now we're talking about Algeria today. After weeks when we've seen millions of Algerians taken to the streets every Friday, indignant, protesting about the social, economic and political situation in the country. Now, uh, there shouldn't have been a, f a fifth of fifth mandate for Bouteflika. That's not what I'm calling for. This is to do with uh, the dreams and hopes of a generation being ridden roughshod over. Lots of young people under 25 years old have never been part of any kind of economic growth in the country. They've been excluded. So we're calling the government and institutions in Algeria and the EU as a whole to stand together in the face of this crisis to respect people and take act, uh, take action. We need to respect the uh, demonstrators who are totally legitimate. We need to listen to people that want to see regime change and law respected. We need to uh, find a way out of this regime that needs uh, democratic transition responding to the desires of the Algerian people. Thank you, Mr. Lopez. I give the floor to Francisco Milamon. Thank you, President. Algeria is very important to the EU and its member states. It's going through a crucial period. As we all know, it went through a very difficult period in the 90s when Islamic terrorist rebellion led to a huge number of deaths. Now, there's a new stage. President Bouteflika has finally decided not to stand for a fifth term, and there's a new political atmosphere. Algeria is in a transition period, and this process, in my opinion, should be brief and also very inclusive. Inclusive is a word that you yourself used, Pre Mr. Commissioner, and I echo that. This change uh, is being called for from the streets. You can see these popular demonstrations, which are peaceful. Let me stress that aspect, the peacefulness of the demonstrations. They don't want violent clashes or don't want to destabilize the country, nor, I think, do they want to go back to the past. They're thinking more about the future. And Europe should look carefully at this process. We should be with the people of Algeria during this period of change, offering cooperation if they want our assistance. The people need to talk in an inclusive, democratic, peaceful way, but it's up to them also to decide what their future is. Thank you, President. Thank you very much, Mr. Milmon. I give the floor now to Mr. Freund. Thank you very much. A lot has been said about Algeria itself. Let me briefly say something about the European Union. For years, I've been saying that Syria would not be the last country where we have failed as European Union. Algeria was coming, will be next. We had a head of state with a shaky hand on the covers of, of the pot holding down the revolution. There's 40 million people in Algeria. We can't imagine what would happen if there was a civil war there. If we'd had a self-assured foreign policy years ago, and had we actually done something effective, we could have stopped a lot of misery. So I appeal to Berlin, Paris, Stockholm, Vienna, and all other capitals. We've got to have strong foreign policy. And the people in Algeria and here in Europe will thank us for it. Thanks very much indeed. Now it's time for Catch the Eye. I've received three requests and I can accept all of them. And Mr. Pospisil is our first speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Mm. I've listened uh, to the entire debate with uh, a lot of attention, and we've uh, set out our political uh, position, and I own up to that. We need to strengthen uh, the process of democratization in Algeria. We have to do everything to make sure that President Bouteflika no longer run and leave uh, his post. And on the other hand, we need to make sure that uh, there is no violence uh, uh, exchanging the uh, current peaceful demonstration 
relations uh, and uh, we should offer uh, Algeria a assistance with organizing a presidential ballot and uh, send out a mission making sure that this uh, be an inclusive and free ballot uh, to uh, produce a uh, not only a legal but also a legitimate president in election. We need to be careful uh, as many colleagues said here because the situation may turn violent but and the way towards democratization must not be stopped in Algeria. Thank you. Mrs. Gomes. Europe's washing its hands in the Western Sahara conflict, even though it has some historic responsibility there. Certain member states can't pretend that it see, can't see what's happening in Algeria. It's crucially important for all of us. Europe needs to see that the Algerian people are peacefully gathering in the streets and demonstrating against a fifth term of office for Mr. Bouteflika, against the ger gerontocracy and in favour of genuine democracy. We can't pretend we're not seeing this. It's obvious what's happening. We need to say to the Algerian people that we support them in their demands for democratic reforms. Europe can be crucial and make sure that we don't see what happened in other Arab Spring countries happen in Algeria. We need to support the young people of Algeria as they call for inclusion, they call for jobs, prosperity, and we need to make sure because their, our, our security depends on theirs. Thank you, says the President. Mr. Faria. Thank you, Mr. President. Commissioner, despite the social meetings that have begun on the 24th of February, calling for Mr. Bouteflika not to stand in the next set of presidential elections, which will be his fifth time, the postponement of the scheduled elections is basically a de facto prolongation of Mr. Bouteflika's power. That's why people are demonstrating this against this clearly unconstitutional delaying tactic. Certain soldiers are now suggesting that articles of the Constitution could be mobilized against the President. There's a very serious economic crisis that's been going on since 2014. It's destabilizing the whole region, and geostrategic consequences will reach as far as Europe. It's part of the battle against terrorism, illegal immigration, etc., etc. It's important, therefore, that the European Union call upon the Algerian authorities to guarantee the right to peaceful demonstration and do all it can to hold free elections in the shortest possible time, making sure that the present situation doesn't lead to another disappointment as we've had so often in the Arab Springs. The President, thanks very much. Now we turn to Commissioner Hahn on behalf of the High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security and Defence. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we will continue to monitor all developments in Algeria, a key partner to our South, as I said. We hope that uh, the situation remains peaceful and we believe it's vital that uh, the legitimate aspirations of the Algerian people are addressed. At the same time, I believe we can agree that the best way we can do right now is uh, not to interfere in an internal process. We should be ready to provide support to the consensus and uh, the ensuing process when the moment is ripe. While uh, following closely the various steps on the way and remembering it's for the Algerians to decide for themselves and among themselves how to make this transition happen. Allow me therefore to express my appreciation for your attention and support in giving this important file the considerate uh, approach it deserves and uh, to stay vigilant on this subject. Thank you very much. Thanks very much.